What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bronx Pinstripe Show. Do not adjust your your phone, your whatever you're <laughs> listening to. That is my voice. It sounds like shit. Uh, had the Yankees not escaped Tampa with a win, I would I would maybe sound just as bad as the Yankees would feel flying back to New York. But they salvaged the win. That kind of felt like so this win this afternoon felt like just slapping a Band-Aid on a broken leg, to be honest. <laughs> But hey, it's better than nothing because if they had gotten swept, uh, holy shit, Scott, what's up? What's up, man? This is uh, this is this is a uh, tough sledding for you right now, but it's kind of entertaining for me. I'm not gonna lie. If anybody complains that they can't tell the two of us apart in this episode, check your ears. Go to the doctor and and make sure something's not uh, wrong with you because there's clear distinction between us. Um, good. I'm glad they got the win today. It was big. Aaron Judge carried the entire team on his back by himself and um and they really tried they tried hard to give it up they did they they tried their yep. hardest but Aaron Judge um thankfully you know did enough this series for them to squeak out a win here Aaron Judge this series 5 for 11 three extra base hits two homers three runs scored the rest of the team 9 for 87 which is a 103 average Two extra base hits, one RBI, zero runs scored. The rest of the team, zero runs scored. Is le- legitimately, Aaron Judge was the offense this weekend. Yeah, I mean it's it's not it's not an exaggeration. He, the the man did everything possible uh, in his power to to control this game, and nobody else contributed. And I don't, I'm done trying to speculate why this is all happening and why these guys are sucking and not playing to the, the, the ability that we believe they can. I have, there are no, and there's no real reason. They're just not playing well. They're bad at offense and they've been bad at offense since the all-star break. I, I don't have any other things. It does today. Like, thank God they today. Because if they didn't, and you look, I mean, looking at the standings now is just depressing because it does feel like this is a, this is the, a means to an end. It feels like there's it's inevitable that Tampa's going to catch this team unless for some godforsaken, some unbelievable reason they figure out how to hit the ball. But this team, um, it, it feels like it's right, they're ready to be caught. And I don't quite understand, um, you know, how they can shift it forward. They, they need to flip it on a switch completely. Right the uh, the win this after the the win this afternoon to to escape Tampa w- without being swept, you know maybe that is enough to make this team wake up and say okay we still got a a four game standing lead I think it's three in the loss column lead with uh, another weekend series against Tampa coming up so we take care of business against Tampa and it's going to be pretty hard for them to catch them. But at the same time, it does feel like a sinking ship and that this win is just delaying the inevitable. Like I said, slapping a Band-Aid on a broken leg or putting some flex seal on that sinking canoe. Like, that's honestly what this seems like. When and Watch watch the flex seal slander. (laughs) Yeah, you're a flex seal guy. You're a big flex seal guy. Big flex seal guy. It works. It absolutely works. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Yeah, that, you don't. That actually doesn't surprise me. You are a Flex Seal guy. Just like just go around the house, just going around with a can of Flex Seal. Just that could use some Flex Seal. That could use some Flex Seal. Bam, bam. Yeah. But it's like the offense just so anemic. The the nine nothing loss on Friday. I think even Boone in his post game when he sounded dejected said this is rock bottom for us. Like I think he used the the phrase rock bottom. It certainly felt like that. And then obviously the the three runs the rest of the way to, to somehow get a win. But um, it, it, it did feel like rock bottom on Friday. Uh, Saturday wasn't much better. The Yankees only got three hits, the, the one home run in the ninth inning from Judge. But are you taking this win this afternoon, Scott, saying, okay, this could be something they can grasp onto and then try and figure their shit out? Or are you just saying this is, this is just delaying the inevitable? It's not delaying. It's so much as the delay of the inevitable, or it, it's it's definitely not a like let's let's, uh, let's tie on to this one and just like build off of this because they've they've had plenty of opportunities to do that before. They're not do they haven't done it for an extended period of time. So no, I'm not going to sit here and just say this one win is is a is like you know a moment for them anymore. But the inevitable is that 
the, uh, the, the standings are going to most likely come down to the last week, week and a half. And unless this team gets their complete heads out of their asses, they're going to get caught and it's going to be the worst, the worst um, defeat, basically the worst catching of all time. It's, it's, it's bad. So they, they need to, for their own sake, for their own, for their, for their own self, uh, they need to go out there and, and play better baseball so that they don't give up this lead. But th- there's no other motivation than they have besides blowing a massive lead and going back in the history books for a, a, a Yankees blowing a, a lead that, that hasn't happened like this in some time. Yeah, certainly some things can happen over the next, uh, let's just call it month of baseball, where they do secure the division. If you start playing better baseball and you win enough games where Tampa cannot catch you or Toronto cannot catch you, that is something to grasp on and as a positive going into the postseason. But if you continue to play like crap and Tampa and Toronto just don't catch you because maybe they don't win enough games and you just win by default, I'm sorry, that that to me is, is yeah, you won the division, but that's not going to have... That's not a, that that is not achieving what I think uh, this team needs in order to to go into the postseason. Well, no, I just I, at this point I just need them to go to the postseason. At this point, I need them to get to the postseason. Like I'm not joking. I'm seeing the I'm seeing so many so many different opportunities for them to be caught, and I'm looking at the standings and who they're playing and all of these different um, situations with who's playing well right now, and. There's, there's there's a lot of opportunities where this could go bad. You know, I know we always say that Minnesota has no – nobody nobody is scared from Minnesota, by Minnesota, and, and they've lost a few games in a row. But at some point – and I said this last year or the year before. I don't remember when it was. But at some point, that shit's going to flip. It's going to flip, and I'm scared. I'm scared that it's going to flip with the, twi- the Twins at some point in the very near future, and they're not going to play well against the Twins, and it's not going to go well in lack of twin series – and it's going to be one of those things. But if we can just course for the games, that would be great. Because if we can just mop the floor with the Minnesota Twins, as the A always have, that will give them a little mojo back. I that will help them. I know uh, Buxton's out. Polanco's out. They have some guys that, that are not um, playing in the upcoming. They're also injured right now. So I could see that as, uh, as, a, good, as a good thing. I just need do or whatever we're calling it here to not to not happen right now for the Minnesota Twins and the the Yankees they they need to they need to go out there and kick their ass Scott you have been saying that the Twins are due I think for four years on this podcast and that has not come to fruition yet so I don't know that I'm buying into that but the Yankees remaining schedule is not exactly easy and I think I was I was listening to Susan and Ricky Ricardo for a little bit today and Susan was commenting how, well, we thought the West Coast trip was going to be easy. And look how that turned out, because the, obviously the A's and the Angels are not the best of teams. But the Yankees still have four against the Twins, three against Tampa, two at Boston, three at Milwaukee, two versus Pittsburgh, four versus Boston, three at Toronto, three versus Baltimore, four at Texas. The easy teams on that calendar are clearly the Pirates and the Rangers. But four games in three days we've talked about this a a bunch of times on the show so far to end the season in texas is not exactly the the easiest of situations i know the red sox are in last place but i still don't love playing the red sox six more times this season if they can cause the yankees some headaches they definitely will and then toronto and the tampa series are going to potentially make or break if the yankees win the division or not so I think, uh, what'd you say, Logan? They're 15th in strength of schedule uh, around Major League yeah, Baseball? exactly. Exactly the midpoint. Uh, the ways of third with their right. games against the Astros um, and then nine against the, six against the Astros and nine against the Blue Jays. So 15 games total. So that's, you know. That's a very difficult schedule to end for Tampa. So if we're, if we're going to take some solace in the fact that the Yankees somehow salvaged a win today to keep the Rays a little bit further distance away and the Yankees have a a middle of the pack strength of schedule and the Rays have a very difficult strength of schedule. That is definitely a positive you could take away from this afternoon. If we're looking for positives then, then yes, that's it. The the way the schedule plays out. However, if the Yankees can't score runs, it doesn't matter how bad the opponent is. If they can't score runs, then they are their enemy. And that that is the name of the game at this point. These guys have to be able to put on the board I mean, the pitching hasn't been 
great in the second half, but it hasn't been a problem either. These guys need to put up runs outside of Aaron uh, and help him out, or he's gonna get he's gonna get pitched to even less if these guys continue to struggle. No matter if it's Pittsburgh or Texas or Boston or Baltimore, if they can't score runs, they're not going to be able to win games at on in a on a consistent level. And because of that, that they're not going to be able to 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 continue to to be in place. Uh, they're not going to save this this division. It, it's going to come up. They need to score runs. There's no other way to put it. Like that's clear as day. What needs to happen? Yeah, today the Yankees had the bases loaded in the fifth inning for Stan. He flew out. He's been terrible since returning from the IL. I think he's three for thirty-three or thirty-four since returning from the IL. The Yankees then had uh, first and third with no outs in the seventh. They did get the sack fly from Cabrera, which is which is good, but they didn't extend the lead further than that. And then they wasted first and third, no outs in the eighth inning. So they kept it a close game for the Rays, who almost came back, but that that very easily could have bit them in the ass today. Well, yeah, it absolutely could have. And and, and Holmes will and helping matters again. He he still doesn't look like it. it. You know, we were. Uh, to be and the guy that took over that closer role he's not he's not putting the fear in guys as before he the the strikeout pitch is out of the zone but but so i'm very thankful that the umpire called the pitch um and the gun did say 102 miles per hour i don't know if that i don't know if i believe that because nasty pitch for whatever reason he's he's uh he's not locating like he did and guys are putting decent swings on him so um, but yeah, they, they, they got, they got lucky. They got a little lucky in the ninth inning and that's a good thing. Luck is good. Maybe that's what we can look for. A little luckiness can help you get going because then it's out of your control and then just good things are happening to you because of luck. Maybe that's what they need. They just need a little good luck, get rid of the bad luck, enter some good luck. And maybe that will, uh, that will change the bats because there's no other reason that that is explainable and why this offense is going the way it is. So maybe because it was a 102 mile an hour sinker, it was such a fast sinker, the umpire couldn't see that it was a ball below the zone. Is that what you're saying? It was one of those. It was one of those perfect uh, placement pitches. We were talking about this. I don't know weeks ago here with with Trevino, where he he just raises the eye level of the glove and a ball down in the zone. That's where you can really steal a strike, in my opinion. I mean, it was it was a borderline pitch. It wasn't an egregious call. If it was against us, I may say it was an egregious call. But because it was the it was uh it was our guys who did that not egregious and trevino yanks that ball up from the bottom he does it as well as anybody uh and i think that's where they they're, they're able to get a lot more i know we ran through the numbers but that that low pitch is is one that could be very deceiving i think for the umpire so credit to trevino for for framing that ball and and getting that pitch because that was that was it that was a massive massive pitch for this game that was the exact pitch that Boone has been thrown out like a number of times for judge being caught having it called a strike on judge like that, that is that is the exact same pitch you know a, a ball length below the strike zone which is a ball it's clearly a ball it's I understand it's a difficult pitch for umpires to miss but that that that's a lucky call for the Yankees and I don't know what happens if that's called a ball <laughs> they probably lose the game because that's how it's been going well, you can go back got... to the the situation where Boone got thrown out with that that phantom catcher's interference. I mean, the ball, I, I was I was a little confused and really trying to to follow this. So it, you know, it hit me across the face of seeing something here. But that ball that was against the screen, or Boone thought was against the screen, that he was asking for the replay, but it not to challenge. I don't quite understand like where how you can, but I'm not challenging it. I just want you to look yeah. at it so i don't have to challenge it it's one of those like very strange things with instant replay because then for the catcher's interference which is a challengeable a reviewable call it was clearly not a passenger or a, a catcher's interference the ball was tipped into the glove made the glove look the way it did um but boone clearly didn't have that ability to to review the call because his challenge was gone it was all very confusing. I don't quite understand why they the, the whole root of this is getting it right and they they're they're tripping over their own feet to try to get things right when it's right in front of their face. 
it's what happens when you make rules before you actually see how game situations and challenge situations play out. So MLB came up with a set of rules and now everyone's just trying to play by those rules, but sometimes it doesn't always make sense. I think what happened on that pop-up from DJ is Boone said, can can you take a look at it or can you, can you talk? Logan, did he say take a look at it or talk about it? I think he probably said take a look at it, but I, I think what he was asking for was them to talk about it similarly right. to like the way that you can kind of just like ask them to talk about it without using right. a challenge for certain things like a foul ball or something. Get all the but, umpires um, together. Maybe the third base umpire saw it better right. than the home plate exactly. umpire or something like that. Um, so I understand. So say he said, take a look at it or can you talk about it? And then cash comes out. It's like, Hey, that's <laughs> he's calling for a challenge here. Like I completely understand where cash is coming from on that, on that point, especially if he said, can you take a look at it? Take a look at it to me means challenge it, but take a look in the sense, but if it's a home run call, all the home run calls are reviewable. Can you, so if he came out and said, can you take a look at that? He's just like prompting them to go look at it, which is their own yeah. choosing. It makes no damn sense. That's my point. We're talking about vernacular here. It's like, we're talking about particular words that are used. What happened to so like the, they need a challenge flag. How about oh, a, they challenge need a challenge flag, flag. Like a red, something uh, official, a red challenge yeah. flag. Yeah. Something like that that it's will cause... that will say okay, we're, I don't have to like guess what you're saying through the words, <laughs> through the this isn't this isn't like a you know a charades moment or me understanding what you're saying exactly. There needs to be a clear line of like you guys need to look at that. It was close enough where the where the umpires should be looking at a play like that. I'm not challenging it because I haven't thrown my red flag. Therefore, nothing is nothing is uh, unclear here. We all know where we are. We all know where we stand. So if that's the case, then, you know, we're just looking at the words that were said and, and that was what was confusing. Then, I mean, baseball needs to clean that shit up quickly. Yeah. So that's what Boone was obviously heated about. And that's why he got tossed. What was it? The ninth time he was tossed this year. I think, I think I saw it was the ninth time, which seems like a lot, especially he got tossed a bunch in the first half of the season when the team was going so well, it was always just for arguing balls and strikes on Aaron judge and Giancarlo Stanton. Now he's getting tossed because he's, he's, phantom challenging plays and stuff but if we're if we're gonna you know stick with some positives from the sunday win this is frankie montes's best start as a yankee for sure he he looked dominant in in certain uh in those innings and and he looked dominant i mean look i know we were talking about last last uh episode if this guy is unhealthy if he's not right with the shoulder everything i saw today looked like a healthy man going out there throwing a baseball it looked like a healthy pitcher throwing a baseball that's what it looked like so you know maybe it's been a matter of of him just working back and not being able to figure out i'm not gonna you know sit on one story and just like act like this is the uh, the new normal and this is the way but this is what it should be this is what we expected this is exactly what what when we heard that this uh, this trade happened what we were getting we were getting a guy that you know, dynamic had uh, had filthy stuff. Could uh, good velocity, good strikeout pitches. Could could step up in the moment. That bulldog mentality that we were talking about. I saw that. I saw I saw more of that today for sure than I had seen. Even that you know there was an opportunity where where um, you know runner on. Uh, I think it was his last inning. It just felt like a two run home run was about to happen, and then it didn't happen. There was a fly out to second of the inning, but. It was like the way things have been going recently. Oh, here we go. Now, I think it was the, right after the catcher's interference, actually. It, this is There was a long delay, and like you could feel it. You could feel the two-run home run coming, and then it didn't. So that was that was nice. You're waiting for that other shoe to drop because that's what happened with Montes. Yeah, and this is definitely the best he's looked as a Yankee. Seven strikeouts, only one hit allowed in five innings, 93 pitches. So in the, for those five innings, it was the most dominant he's been as a Yankee. I thought this start and the start against the Mets a couple of weeks ago were his two best starts because I also saw some similar glimpses, like you just said, of dominance in that Mets start. But this one, obviously, he, he didn't allow a run. So uh, it's what the Yankees needed. I, I don't know because of the shoulder and because of his struggles as a Yankee when they're going to start pushing him deeper into the games like if if next time out he's at 93 pitches through five innings does he go out for the sixth inning like that's my question yeah they i mean they need to they need to because he's got to get he's got to get to a point where he's able to 
you're you're saying that you don't know if it's within the the health parameters or the way that they're that right. saying, hey, hundred percent. So if he's ninety three, that's what I'm thinking. Like, is out. that is is should our expectation for Frankie Montes be a hundred pitches, whether that's five innings, four and two thirds innings, six and a third innings, like? It is is that should that be the expect, expectation right around five innings? And if you're at, or excuse me, right around 100 pitches. So if you're at 93 through five, they're not going to push him back out. If he's at 86 through five, maybe they push him back out. Yeah, it might depend on game situation. Might depend on who's coming up in the lineup, how many times he's faced the lineup through. If it's a five to nothing game versus a one to nothing game, like all of those things are factors. I get it, but again, like go back to our conversation on the last episode. Frankie Montes was acquired to not be a hundred pitch five inning guy. He was acquired to be a number two starter, which means pitch deeper into games. Yeah. So, I mean, you're asking if the, if the, if our expectations need to be that, that's what we're looking at. No, that's not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not curbing my expectations for, for him to, to go out and do that. And, and if that's the case, then, and this goes back to the conversation we had last time, unacceptable, unacceptable. If this is, if this is what they, they are deeming is okay for him health wise, it's an unacceptable trip if that's the case. I'm not saying that is the case, but if that if that is the reason and he's a hundred pitch guy and that's it of the shoulder, then there's sort of a, a completely egregious trade uh, for Brian Cashman to execute if they knew that. That said, I don't believe that's true. I think they're gonna, you know I, I have to believe that they're gonna push him beyond um, this point. Uh, and you know, he's getting seven strikeouts, five innings, that, that will run you the counts up on your pitch pitch count up on the arm um, not going to get through uh, a, a ton of innings usually when you're when you're striking out that many guys and especially working counts too so I'm, I'm encouraged because you're right that's two in a row really or the the Mets the Mets um, and then this start those are this is one that you can build on so if we're looking for something to build on not not just the team but for Monta something that's encouraging I know Reno just threw a couple innings in the minors as well so there's some there's some firepower going going back, but again, pitching ain't the problem. The pitching the no. problem. Pitching not the problem. Loisic has also been good. Like he yeah. was trusted to get out of a big jam today, and we're looking at his numbers over coming into today. 19 games, 16 and two thirds innings. He has a 162 ERA, 11 strikeouts, mm-hmm. only three earned runs mm-hmm. over that time, a 170 batting average allowed. So he's he's been closer to, or that is exactly the pitcher we thought Jonathan Loisic was going to be. Yeah, he's been the stopper recently. He's been that guy that's come in and just really give them some consistent innings and gotten them out of jams. You know, look, I'm sitting here staring at my uh, my, my projections just wondering when it's going to happen. When in the month of September is it going to happen that yeah. John Malazzi gets <laughs> I don't think you could take that W. No, no, you can't. Oh, I can absolutely take that W. Are you kidding me? You, I, I literally said John Malazzi would take over the closer role. So, <laughs> but, but I'm sorry. That's not a w, yeah. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. No. I don't think. I, mean, I don't think. It's part of no. It's that's it. It's so the journey how we got there doesn't matter. Who gives a shit? No, it's black and white. The <laughs> bold predictions are, are. There's no gray area in those. It is God, what it is. Got it. So then, was I right about Michael King, even though he's injured? Yeah. For the for the what did you say about him? I don't even remember. I said he. I, I don't remember either. I think. I think I said he was going to be the Swiss. Did I say he'd be the Swiss Army knife? You said he's going to be the Swiss Army. You, as long as I've been saying that the other shoe's going to drop for the Twins and they're going to win something at some point, and that's how long. Yeah. That's how long Michael King has been your Swiss Army knife. Yeah. So, so you yeah, can I book, guess it, so. yeah, he, book it. Book it right, for next right. year. Very good. Book, book my, it next year. One of my predictions for next attached. year. <laughs> if his arms attached, then you're in good shape. Uh, so the the lineup that Boone has been throwing out there has been getting a lot of a lot of talk on Twitter because anytime the offense is struggling, obviously people start blaming the manager. It's like the lineup. Oh, of course, this is why the team's not scoring. I got to admit, when I saw Oswaldo Cabrera betting third today, I got a nice chuckle. Okay, because this that is clearly a fuck it kind of lineup from Boone. <laughs> like this can't get any worse. So let's have Oswaldo Cabrera betting third. But you know. I think there is serious question where the fact that you have had, we're going to go into some numbers in a minute, but Glaber Torres, Aaron Hicks, DJ LeMahieu, Josh Donaldson, all IKF, all absolutely atrocious offensively. And they just continue to get start after start. 
Friday, they call up Peraza. Everyone's excited for, for the top prospect to be called up. And he's not even starting. He gets in the game, but it's a 9 nothing game in the last out of the game. Like, really? That's, that's going to be his debut, pinch hitting in a 9-zip game? So, I understand. So you tried out the, the, a lineup where the bottom half of it is Donaldson, Glaber, IKF, Hicks. It, I mean, those are four automatic outs right now. There's a lot of automatic outs right now. Even DJ LeMayhew is an account. It hasn't got an extra base hit in, in what, four weeks. Uh, he, he's not healthy. That that back foot, they were talking about it on the broadcast today where um, O'Neill was talking about how and why and uh, where he gets his power from. It's a, it's, he's a back foot hitter, meaning a lot of his a lot of his balance is coming from that back foot, so he's able to um, you know, stay in the zone longer. And he's just not able to do that right now. He's not able to do it. He's playing hurt. But the unfortunate thing is, I don't know what they're supposed to do otherwise. Rizzo can't can't be out there. They need someone to go play first base. What are you supposed to do if if um, if Lemayhu can't play? There, there's their options are are very limited. They're already dipping into the AAA roster with uh, with per and Cabrera. There's there's not a ton that, there's not a ton to do to be honest. Un- unless unless uh, you know Rizzo is back and healthy, able to play every day, then you can get DJ some some extra time because there's people who can play, you know, second, short, and basically he doesn't need to be in the lineup every day. But with with Rizzo not able to first play first base, they're kind of screwed. They as much they can do right now. You're right. With, with the first base situation, as long as LeMahieu's not on the IL and Rizzo has got his back problems, then yes, he has to play. Rizzo got an epidural in his back, dude. He got an epidural, Yikes. okay? So it's what you give women who are going into labor. <laughs> That's what Rizzo is dealing with right now. Yeah, LeMahieu's last extra base hit was August 7th in St. Louis. Since the All-Star break, DJ LeMahieu has a 662 OPS. That's pretty bad, but it's not even close to as bad as some of the other guys on the team. Aaron Hicks hasn't had an extra base hit since July 9th against Boston. Dude, July 9th, that's two months ago. He hasn't had an extra base hit in two months, and he's still getting starts. That's asinine. Glaber Torres has been the worst offensive player, perhaps, uh, on the team in the second half. Glaber, in, base- we pr- in baseball. We praised Glaber at the midpoint in the season. I think, I don't remember exactly the grade we gave him, but I think it was like maybe a B plus, A minus. He had an 809 OPS at the All-Star break. Okay, we were like, shit, Glaber, Glaber's back. This is the Glaber Torres, the pre, pre-pandemic pre Glaber Torres, the all-star young player we saw. Since the all-star break, 156 plate appearances, 187 batting average, 218 on base percentage, 293 slugging. He's got four homers, four doubles, and, and, and that's it. It's 511 OPS in 156 plate appearances. That's horrendous. That, that's exact. That was as bad as Joey Gallo. It's like Joey Gallo threw up all over this lineup before he left. On his way like out, the, that was his part. On his gift. way out, he just went. You know, he went like Green Mile on everybody. Just went, <sighs> and just like gave all of his, all of his like terrible offense to every single. Not not not. He spared Aaron Judge because he's like, you know what? You're due an MVP. You should have won no. it in seventeen. Here, he tried here, to I'm poison not, I'm judge. not gonna poison you. I'm not gonna poison. He you. tried to poison judge, but he's impenetrable. He's he's he's, he, he's invincible at this point. <laughs> but everybody else got poisoned by the Joey Gallo sickness that he that he spewed out. Just the the one here. You are now only allowed to swing in one plane, one area of the zone. Can you swing for for the rest of the season? And and they've been so bad ever since then. So bad, so bad. I need Matt Carpenter and, to come back in the right. worst way, if for no other reason, just to be there, just to show up, slap some just to sense be into there, people, just to slap be a some man. sense into people. I know he's, <laughs> I know just... he's in the dugout, but my God, do they need, do they need some, uh, some, some, some old man vibes right now. You know, they need, they need an adult in the clubhouse. Okay, they, they need they a grown ass adult. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just need an adult, okay? Listen, I, I talked about this last time. I was at a bachelor party with 15 guys. Eventually, one of us had to step up and be the adult in the room or else we're all going to die, okay? So someone needs to step up and be the adult in the room right now or else this team is going to die. We're leaving the strip club right now. Now is the moment. I didn't say those words, but I'm, you're not far off, okay? You are not far off.
<laughs> it is three o'clock in the morning, guys. I've seen him put down three thousand dollars in cash. We're leaving right now. All right. Yeah. So it, it's just <laughs> the uh, let's talk about IKF because I think it's now a mental thing with IKF. He made another error today and almost made a, a second error on a, on a throw that that DJ saved for him. People are obviously questioning his playing time, and Boone continues to put him out there. But right now, with the infield situation, I think if Rizzo were healthy and DJ was still in the lineup, you'd have him at sec- DJ at second, Rizzo at first, and I think you might just start Peraza at shortstop. But ne- right now, the discussion well, is... Well, maybe he would, would get some rest finally. Maybe he'll rest and actually get that Maybe. Thing. Even though they're talking on the broadcast like it won't do any good if they rest him right now it won't do any good like he needs he needs like extended period of time for this thing to go away so they're just like well that's it this is what we these are the cards that we have dealt um but i don't they certainly don't want to play him in the field other than first base i would assume uh so that but, the injury even more i don't know but my question is who who lost who are you replacing? Because right now, both IKF and Glaber don't deserve to play, but you don't have enough bodies to not play them Everybody both. So sucks. One of them... Everybody sucks. That's, I mean, I don't know what... There is no replacement that that, that gives us an answer. This is the problem. He, Who should Peraza play for every day is my question. Who should Peraza play for every day? Just alternate the guy Glaber. sucking the okay. worst. Yeah. I mean, he's he's been bad over the last seven games too. He, he's, he came up hot and 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 has not been over the last time he he's great in the field like energy he's got a, a longer no, leash paraza paraza not yeah. cabrera you're getting fooled too by the oswaldos uh, uh, okay? although, the oswald yeah. oswaldo you're getting fooled paraza <laughs> paraza who should paraza he, play for i don't care any of them it doesn't matter they all suck they all can't hit they need to they need to figure it out so one one person so then um, what are we talking about <laughs> yeah basically seriously like if, 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 if i you're i'm trying to like you know dissect some things and see like actually what this team could do but like it, 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 it you're right we're at the point where everyone sucks and until some guy stops sucking nothing's going to change and that's the thing you know with ben attendee now with this uh uh broke the hook of his of his hamate bone and need surgery awesome this is the guy that that's finally turned it on and finally figured out, uh, you know, the guy that we thought he was going to be, and he's been very good recently. He was the other the other guy that was producing some type of offense, and now he's out for weeks. He he comes back for a, a a first or second round of the playoffs. That's kind of what we're looking at, Logan. So Ben Intendi spoke after the game just to kind of. Uh talk about this a little bit more uh he said he thinks he may be able to return before the end of the regular season as he has had a similar injury when he was a college freshman so do what you want with that but i mean there's a chance i mean we looked it up uh probable timelines like one to four weeks in a cast before resuming that's such a wide range though (laughs) i mean call it in the middle call it two and a half weeks and then start baseball activities you you know 10 more days to ramp up call it maybe yeah i think best case scenario Best case scenario is he's back the last week of the regular season, right? Like realistically, best case yeah. scenario, he's he's playing. He gets ten plate appearances in that last road trip. That's best case scenario, and then you just hope he's he's sharp enough to play in the playoffs and and healthy enough to play in the playoffs. I well, I don't the, know what else you can do. The options beyond him are <laughs> are not there. So yeah, he plays when he says he can well, play. He plays. there's no. Uh, there's no other way around it. So if, if he deems himself healthy enough to play and the doctors gave him the, the green light to come back and, and start going, then you get his ass in the lineup as fast as humanly possible because it's an option. Even if he's at you know 85%, 80%, like that's the guy that we need. Because he goes back to ball and actually does things with a, with a baseball. Whereas these other guys, um, they, they, they haven't ever had to hit a ball since the freaking beginning of July. Um, who gets, who has more extra base hits from today through the rest of the season, Aaron Hicks or Andrew Benintendi? That's so dirty. That is <laughs> such a terrible question. I, you know, there's, it's, it's Andrew Benintendi. That's, that's what, that's, that's where we are with Aaron Hicks. He's a golfer. <laughs> he 
he's a golfer. So do you think this is affecting his golf game? Do you, do you think this no, baseball he probably, No, no, because he's he playing the best it. golf he, of his life. Playing the best golf of his life. So he's he's probably hunting himself for doing certain things on the baseball field just so that his handicap doesn't get affected in the off season because he know that's he knows that's probably his livelihood from now on because he's not a good baseball player. He can't play baseball anymore. Stick Look, run around I'm sick some of some of, the of these other... guys, man. <laughs> Let's have, a, let's have a pro, impromptu fest, uh, festivus in uh, in September. Man, I someone needed to like go live with something last night after that game because I was like I needed some therapy after that one. So I'm just. Were gonna... you lower? Hold on. Were you lower after Saturday nights versus Friday nights game? Because yes, Friday yes. night after. Yes, I, was. I think so. I I was so I was at my cousin's wedding this weekend. So I was with uh, with my dad all weekend, right? So he was just beside himself. But he and I were chatting at the rehearsal. We're at the the post rehearsal dinner, like drinks and everything. And because it just lost nine to nothing, and Peraza had just pinch hit as the last out of the game, and we were just like, we were just like screaming. It's part of why I don't have a voice. We're just screaming at each other the same things. Like this team fucking sucks. They don't know what they're doing. It's just like that's I think why I don't have a voice because I was just yelling about how bad the Yankees are to my dad. Bruno Mars is in the background. They're doing the electric slide and the two, yeah. the two you and your dad are just in the corner screaming at each other. Probably right next to an amp. Probably right next to a speaker too because <laughs> because that's just the way it works. The 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 you table's the there worst part is and you're too. screaming at each other. There was a one of our relatives. He's a he's a big Red Sox fan. He was actually rubbing it in our face. I'm like, your team's in last place, dude. But that's how bad the Yankees have been. The Yankees have been so bad that a, a fan of a last place team actually could shit talk us. They can because that because of what's happened. That because of the collapse, everybody can talk shit about this team right now, no matter where you are in the standings. Because when you look at what what should have been and where they were the fact that they are in the position now where they're what is it five games after this win five games out of four in the last column i think out of um or maybe it's five in the last column now uh, out of the no 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 uh, it's it's worse it's Tampa four out of the first place no tampa is is three back in the last column but four back it's four back in the last column it's four after today four it was five. four that's what it was yeah Oh, so I thought Michael Kay said that had they lost today, it would have been two back in the loss. Column. Yeah, it's it's a two game swing though because it's a it's, it's a two yeah yeah it's a two yeah. game swing because it's one in each in one it's right, in the right. loss okay, makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Math. You know when when you play the team and one of them gets a loss, the other team doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. endo facto two game swing. Um, but yeah, the I don't even know the hell I was saying. But the thing is, you can't collapse. You have a 15 game lead. You're you're on pace to win. Like you're getting talked about, like the 1998 Yankees. And then all of a sudden, you're like, eh, you shit your pants, and you do it for an entire half of the season. That's embarrassing. It's there's no excuse for it. None. Zero. <laughs> it's been it's been it's been a two month diarrhea. It's been it's just been the runs for two straight months. It's the That's trots. what this team has been. Yeah. <laughs> they're the best uh, thing. They're, they're that continuously. Was, uh drinking like lake water just like oh it's fine just keep drinking it <laughs> the best thing that was going around was at the end of june that uh post that mlb sent out that the yankees were on pace for 120 wins you guys yeah. see that and it was like and everybody all those red sox fans they retweeting it left and right that i mean to be on a 120 win pace though like it it's not like they were on a 120 win pace through april you know 25th right like it it was a substantial point in the season where they were winning 72% of their games. It was not ridiculous, the conversations that we were having. Now, did any of us think they would actually win 120 games? No. But you're like, oh, well, this team is going to win 105, 108, maybe even 110 games because even if they come back down to earth a little bit, they're so far ahead that even if you play slightly worse, you're still at 106 wins or something like that. And now this team is scratching and clawing. 430 baseball 426 baseball for two months I, I don't I've never seen a team go from this good to this bad yes teams go from that bad to that good because 
pretty that's baseball susan you can just get hot and and be hot for an extended period of time the nationals a couple years ago they were like a 500 team through the first half of the season they want an epic run to win the world series but to go from that good that dominant in every part of the roster to this dog shit i've never seen that before all right, perfect segue. This is a, this is one of the one of the mailbags that we got this year or this this week uh, from Jesse. Thank you, Jesse, for writing it. Uh, and she says, Scott, Monty before, Curse? before you re- hold on, can you b- before you read it? The mailbags are brought you to brought to you by WinBet, which is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. They bring the excitement of the win Las Vegas to online sports betting and casino play from boosted same game parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport. WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive your special offer. You can bet 50 bucks, win 200, use code XBLUEWIRE. Mailbags. All right, got to pay bills. Thank you. Uh, this is from Jesse. Her message states, the, Mo- the Monty curse? Anyone else have the feeling that trading Monty will be the ultimate ass bite of uh, Despite for the season, I write this after the Yankees were embarrassed nine nothing at the hands of the Rays, dropping their lead to five games in the AL East since the deadline, maybe even before. Our starting pitcher has mo- well, Monty is currently five and zero with a one point four ERA and six starts for the Cards. No, that wasn't his usual line for us, but my gut tells me that he was to called the staff together. Yank, you could hear and see how much he didn't want. To, uh, he didn't want to be anything else. He loved. He was calm. He was consistent. He was predictable. He was everything these other guys are not. That calm and that confidence seem to have left with Monty. All we have now is constantly wondering how deep they will. When will they blow up? How many runs will they surrender? My prediction: Monty curse brings one of two things. Either the Yankees completely melt down and get bounced early from the playoffs by the twin extra salt in the wound if uh, he John James delivers the dagger. Oh God. And or better slash worse yet, the Yankees make it to the World Series and Wayne Wright Monty to shut them down and Monty pitches an absolute gem in game six to win the World Series for the <laughs> St. Louis Cardinals. Look, uh the, the I don't know I think the the twin of that's worse, especially with the the man who who will not be named, um, but yeah no I mean I, look Jesse has a Jesse has a point, a very valid point here. This could go down. This could be one of those things. He's been dominant since he left. <laughs> he hasn't had like a there's no blip on the radar with Jordan Montgomery in St Louis. He's 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 like the 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 you know. The heir apparent. He's the next. He's the next great lefty starter for the St. Louis Cardinals, and there's and in their storied history of baseball. That's who he is. That's okay. He wasn't going to start a playoff game for the Yankees, so they, they didn't. They didn't need him. <laughs> they didn't need him. Who I'm mad I start? even said that. I am, I'm mad I even believe that for a minute. The, the narrative was the the propaganda that got spewed at at five whatever it was five oh five for whatever the deadline was it was at four p.m. five p.m. five minutes after the deadline the propaganda coming from Yankee Stadium was palpable. Here's the thing about the curse again, and I, I know I'm like a broken record at this point, but the pitching ain't the problem. No. I my, the the fact that Monty's over in St. Louis doing his thing, good for him. It's a it's 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 certainly salt in the wound for for all of us looking at, at him over there, and then knowing that this other kid, uh, Bader, is in a is in a boot or on the way back. Like I need to hear something about him. I need to hear that he's, you know, running at ninety seven percent right now. I I need to hear something about Harrison Bader who's going to come in and prevent me from watching Aaron Hicks play baseball anymore. I need to hear that so that at least at least when you're looking at what Cashman was doing with that, understanding where our problems are and, and how significantly they are on the offensive side of the ball, maybe, maybe by the grace of God, this guy, Harrison Bader from Bronxville, New York can walk in and be the heir of, he can be the guy, he can be the savior coming from, you know, coming from our own fan, uh, fan, uh, group, fan, fan, fandom. I can't think right now. I'm I'm getting angry. I don't even know. But Harrison Bader needs to be the guy. He needs to be the guy to come back. Or Brian Cashman, 
I don't know how you show your face. I don't know how you show your face after that one. I have another question. Who has more extra base hits from now to the rest of the season? Harrison Bader or Aaron Hicks? <laughs> Harrison Bader has to be the answer. It's the only answer. It's the only answer. Um, Harrison Bader it did uh, has began baseball activities. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm kidding, is, he taking, is he taking um, dry swings or wet swings? Um, it just says uh, performing baseball <laughs> activities and running drills in New York. Uh, he could start a minor okay. league rehab assignment soon. Um, so do what you want with that. Basically, only other injuries that matter are Severino's probably going to make one more start and then come back up to the big leagues when he's able to be activated and do like a piggyback. Um, Britain is doing well, probably going to be back in the next couple of weeks. And uh, Efros and where you both started throwing programs. Chapman also threw, which we don't care about that. Yeah. But. How's, how's his infection doing? Okay, yeah. a third and final <laughs> question. Who has more extra base hits from now until the end of the season? Luis Severino or Aaron Hicks? <laughs> Look, the, there's no there's a, a universal DH right now, so it's uh, it's unfair unfair game. You might unfair get like a answer. 16 can't, can't inning answer. game and need a pinch hitter. Who knows? <laughs> um, Harrison Bader doing baseball activities and doing running drills means he's not in a boot any longer. That's my assumption from that, which is which is positive. So, I will I will take that as a uh, as a positive. And look, it, it does seem like they're still gearing up all of these guys to come back like a week to two weeks before the end of the season. The problem is, is that that AL East might still be, uh, you know, a problem before right. then. And um, well, unless also, they can actually figure out how to hit with these guys, then then those last two weeks might be very different than what we're than what we're seeing in front of us right now. Because Chicago White Sox uh, playing well, Seattle Mariners playing playing well, there might be a fight for that last wild card out of the blue. I'm not joking. I'm not even like this is not. This is not just like hyperbole anymore. We're looking at what what's happening. There are there are hot teams coming up for the bottom and that second that last what that third wild card. And if the Yankees continue on this pace, they're going to get past the AL East and then they're going to be fighting for a friggin' wild card spot. That's where they are unless they start hitting. That's so, that's exactly where we are headed. Back at the all And I and I am the optimistic one on this show. I am <laughs> not I am today, looking boy. for glass half full, not today, but buddy. I cannot see it. I cannot see it unless they start hitting. And there's no other there's no other way around this. Hit the ball. Bat to ball. That's it. I need you to hit the freaking ball. Back at the trade deadline when they made the moves and then they said, well, Harrison Bader's coming back towards the end of the year. We're going to get Luis Severino back at the end of the year. Britain maybe back at the end of the year. They were probably, and rightfully so, everyone was thinking, the last two weeks of September is basically going to be like a spring training for this team. They would have their stuff wrapped yes. up, and they would just use that to get guys right, get guys innings that needed innings, get guys at-bats that needed at-bats. You're not going to have that luxury anymore. So, question from Matt that dovetails nicely into what you just said. When the Yankees inevitably find themselves in second place, does Boone get fired immediately or after they get swept in the first round of the playoffs? I can't imagine it has ever happened in Major League Baseball history that a, a team going to the playoffs fires the manager before the playoffs. But if the Yankees blow the division, I actually would not be opposed before entering the playoffs that they fire Boone and still go to the playoffs because I think that maybe could, ch could change something. Otherwise, Matt's right. They will blow the lead. Boone will sit there and tell you, well, we're going to turn the page and they'll get freaking stomped in the first round. Yeah, absolutely. If they blow the lead and they and they end up in a wild card and they, so they're still in the playoffs, you get rid of Boone right then, <laughs> because maybe that will uh, figure that that will um, you know either guilt the players into playing well or or light a fire under their ass. Who knows? But but sure, there's no there's no he clearly doesn't do anything. If if he's if they blow this lead, he does nothing. There's no reason for him to be there. So you just get rid of him and, and send a message. But. Yeah, man. The um, they they uh, they're 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 at they're at risk for that. And I, I hope I hope that we we are, are looking back and Jorge Posada is right. That's who I'm. I keep leaning to my op, my optimistic side goes back to Jorge Posada, talking about how the the Yankees are better for this. They're better for this. Oh, right. He was interviewed during the Paul O'Neill ceremony, Paul and they're better for this. He's seen this. He said, "I'm happy they're going through this." 
they're going to be better. They're going to, this is going to be good for them. So I'm, I'm going back to Jorge and, and, and I need, I need Jorge to be right. I need Jorge to be right. Maybe what Jorge meant is they're going to blow the division and then clean house. (laughs) That's not what he was referring to. He was definitely referring to a successful team in the past that he was uh, drawing a comparison to who had used it as fuel and used it as adversity, which would then overcome to then roll into the playoffs with a lot of momentum. And that, that is what we're all waiting for. That is what we are all waiting for. That, 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 that moment, that turning point to then say, okay, that is behind us. And now we are going to play good baseball and be the, the team that we were in the first half, or at least close to it. That is what we're all waiting for. At the end of the day, that's what we're waiting for. All right. Do you want to read uh, our friend Jake in New Zealand's mailbag and we'll wrap it up? Jacob from New Zealand. Jake from New Zealand. Uh, Boone calling IKF one of the best shortstops in the game after the Angels lost is uh, has broken me. Uh, it's just gaslighting the fan base. The f- fan base <laughs> is the word that I could not think of like 10 minutes ago. Uh, how could how could he have pinch hit for Trevino instead of Glaber or Donaldson is also moronic. Surely this was a move of a manager not wanting to upset his player rather than doing what's best for his team. I felt they carried over old praise of IKF. Um, uh, do you think Boone protecting players is a flawed strategy? All right. Uh, first of all, I think Boone just supports his players at, at the end of the day, no matter what, in the post, post-game post press conference. He, that's just what he does. So don't take anything that he says for, for you know, as, as factual, as, as like a real thing. It's He's just – he's supporting his guys. That's what he does. Uh, it, it is what it is. Like we should all be used to that by now. But when we're talking about – pinching pinch hitting and we're looking at the other options these are not good options right now either this is this is exactly the problem so no i mean the pinch, like the pinch giving hitting support is, to his guy is exactly what he does yeah i was more because the idea of boone just gaslighting the fan base and then the fan base having a meltdown is just really funny because because him calling ik if i believe he was referring defensively called him one of i think a, a top five to seven defender in the league and it's just like Yankees fans hear that after we've seen IKF boot routine ground ball after routine ground ball. It's like, come on, man. Like, What's up, Logan? So I, ha- I have to get in on this because I am a Boone apologist, but this really irritated me. Um, so on Michael on the Michael K show the next day after he said he was one of the best defensive shortstops in, in baseball, they asked him, and he said, well, I think he's probably in the five to seven range. And then they asked, like, what are you looking at? Because not much backs that up. And he said, well, quote unquote, the internal numbers that we look at as far as defensive runs saved, range, and making plays. So now all of a sudden we can use (laughs) eye test to decide um, shortstop defense. Where, yes, defensive runs saved loves IKF. We know that. Outs above average hates IKF, which is the problem because these numbers. Isn't that range? Yes, but also, like, these numbers are flawed. They're small sample sizes at the end of the day, right. and they don't work. But even so, so the numbers that you use at range is not a number. Everybody, Making everybody, is not everybody is coming. Hold on, hold on. Everybody is coming. It's totally ridiculous. I like <laughs> crush the nerds. I like, I, I like, I, I like it. that. I want to just start using. He's good at he's you know he's got a, he's good at making the plays. What is <laughs> he's that? making it's the plays. He's he's plus four making the plays. <laughs> He's he's got a he's got a one seventy three making the plays stat. Oh, based on what? No, he makes yeah. Well, you plays. could also go back to the to the eye test and completely discount what Boone said because he doesn't make the routine plays. So right. what, what he does make the hard plays. Some of these. He, he yeah. makes hard plays. It's the he routine doesn't... plays. It's the it's the double clutch throw. It's the it's the you know, the ball scoots up on the a little bit on the perfectly groomed infield and he can't react to that by you know seeing the ball under the glove so no he doesn't he's the routine plays are the ones that drive me nuts with the guy basically the reincarnation <coughs> of glaber torres and miguel andujar Oof. all over all I mean, <laughs> miguel andujar like that that was a different level of bad de- defense but all right that's gonna wrap it up thank you to jake matt and jesse for submitting the mailbag questions always appreciated if you want to submit your mailbag questions you can do so bronxpinstripes.com slash podcast uh, got the twins coming up. Tyone versus Chris Archer, Garrett Cole versus Joe Ryan, Herman versus our pal Sonny Gray, and then uh, TBD versus TBD. Should be a fun series. Yankees always mop the floor with the twins. If they don't, 
then maybe it's uh then maybe we got some even bigger problems we'll talk to you guys in a few days